Back for more Siberia, your Gibbs, Kate, Dan, Oscar, the gang's all here. Alright folks, we are right here and uh, we're going to go back this way. Because we're going to go and deal with uh, this elevator and I guess the mine shaft. I should actually check what I picked up just a few moments ago. I don't need to do that again. Oh, that was just to ele activate the elevator. Okay. Let's go down, down, down. Okay, here we are. Now, what did I actually pick up? Ah, spark plug. Maybe that'll help here. Yep. Uh, okay. How do I... Oh, there we go. Let there be light. Okay. Interesting. I want to make sure I don't miss anything as we go through here. Oh, hello, little buddy. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, sure, let's keep going. I see there's a handle there. Let's go activate it, I suppose. I don't need to do that. I apparently don't need to do that. Board here. We're down here somewhere. And the music just got all ominous here. Hmm. Interesting. What's this over here? I discovered it's a prison or something. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where the heck am I now? I think I just left. That was that doorway. Yeah, okay, so maybe this is just a shortcut. Because remember we were there and it said it's locked. Okay, let's go this way then. Hmm. That is one heck of an organ. Look at the size of this thing. Wow. Who's this guy? Hi there. I think I'll take that screwdriver. Uh. Do you talk? Don't think you do. It's funny how these sticks here, they kind of remind me of um, fondue sticks. You know those little forks you jab into the meat and you stick it into the peanut oil? That's what they remind me of. All right, I guess we're done here then. Sure we are. As one ginormous steam organ. Holy cow. Let's go this way, I guess. This is interesting. Uh, looks like we've got something here to do. And 
and guess what? We have a screwdriver. Oh, we kept all our metal shears. One screw at a time. That means we can climb the stairs now. Hmm. What do we have in here? Hello! Isn't this the mystery guy? I think that is. Hey you! Who are you? Careful, I'm warning you. I'm not afraid of you, okay? What do you want? Why did you do that? There must be some misunderstanding. Because you reckon theft is all about misunderstanding, do you? Give me my hands back, now. Your hands? And what are those on the ends of your arms? I can explain everything to you. You see, I'm no thief. You broke into my train, assaulted my driver, mutilated him and stole his hands. Apart from that, you are not a thief. I have not stolen them, miss. Only borrowed them for a while. You've got to be joking. I'm not choking with you, miss. I would never take such liberties. They belong to Oscar, my automaton engineer. Why did you steal them? They are extraordinary. Real mechanical wonders. I would never have been capable of designing such hands myself. Never. Such workmanship, such precision crafting, it is, it is incredible, absolutely incredible. And just because you like them, you decided to steal them? I have only borrowed them, little missy, temporarily, you understand? Of course, I shall return them to you when I don't need them anymore. You can... Excuse me? You see, these hands are all I need to complete my plan. At last, I can finish off my automaton pianist and fulfill my dreams. Everything is now in place. You see, I have converted this old, useless, stupid factory into a magical theater. As you can see, the furnaces, piping, Chimney stacks. They've all been converted into one gigantic organ. I will be able to accompany the world's greatest living singer. Now, all I need is her. <gasps> Wait, what do you mean, all I need is her? I'm sorry, I can't make heads or tails out of your story at all. Without my engineer's hands, I'm stuck here, you see? Everything I have designed, all that I have invented, everything is for her. Do you realize her? Oh, to hear her sing one more time here in my factory. But who is she? Who are you talking about? Helena, the one and only Helena Romansky. Her voice is so pure. Like an angel. One day she came here to Komkoldsgrad. She sang here, you know. When our industrial city was in its heyday. Oh, so long ago now. It was almost unreal. It was magical. I remember it like it was yesterday. Then, later, a long time later, she saved my soul. She saved my life and gave it meaning. When I was told that the mining program was to be abandoned, that this industrial city was consigned to oblivion, that I, its director, would from then on be nothing but a guardian of these rusting remains of a bygone age, that is when I first formed my plan to bring Helena Romansky back to this factory. But this time, she would sing for me, and me alone. 
And is she okay about this? Sure, sure. Once she finds out that I have done all this for her, when she realizes how I converted this vast network of pipes and tubes to create one of the most impressive organs ever made, then, you know, this was no small achievement, miss. Once molten iron flowed through here, now there wafts only beautiful melodies. But then I realized I had to make an automaton pianist. I began to despair that I would never create hands that were intricate enough. Hmm. But then you arrived. So lucky, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, that must have been a happy coincidence for someone around here. So, when will this Madame Romansky come back? When do I get my hands back? I don't know. Maybe someone should look for her. Tell her. Hey, why don't you go? The quicker you bring her back, the sooner you can carry on your business trip. Now, isn't that a good idea? And uh... you promise that once Helena has sung, you will give me back my automaton's hands? I promise, my dear. You have my solemn word. Well, I guess I'm going to have to believe you. Where should I go hunting for this singer, then? I have no idea. But for a woman of the world like yourself, finding her should pose no obstacle. Helena Romansky was a world celebrity, you know. I have collected many objects, souvenirs of her that I keep in a room. A shrine to her glory. It's like her own personal museum in a way. You should take a look. <laughs> wow. This guy is, uh... Yeah. This guy's giving me the chills. <laughs> oh, jeez. This whole story is completely nuts. Yep, bingo! Okay, so let's back out of here. Please, excuse me. I have to go now. We're gonna go see whatever... So ...that was that, uh, our buddy here lowered. Listen. Mm. Obviously all this has been just one big misunderstanding. So you're going to give me Oscar's hands back, and we're going to get out of your city immediately. Out of the question. I must have these hands. That is all. <laughs> I must have these hands. Please excuse me. I have to go now. So be it. Okay. Uh, what's this here? It seems this monorail is controlled from somewhere else. Hmm. Check out all those organ pipes. Wow. I guess we should go explore whatever this is. Hello! Hopefully nothing jumps out of us. Room here. Wow! A dress? Like a bus? Like, what is this? Wow. Holy cow, more than one dress! Hmm. What is this? Young Helena's crystal clear voice moves amateurs and professionals alike. Gathered for the ninth Voix de Ur festival in Brussels, the young Russian soprano was the revelation of the event. She is an exceptional, talented singer, and at the tender age of twenty. Helena looks to have a very promising career ahead of her. Helena Romensky's finest numbers are collected here on this golden disc. Millions of copies of which are being sold around the world. Hmm. 
comrade Helena Romanski sings for the people. Her series of recitals with piano performed in the factories of our great republic. After Kiev, our diva arrives at Komkolskrod. Ravishing Helena is seen here with the factory director, comrade Borodin, and several admirers. Helena Romanski's success in Europe is assured. The great Helena, our nation's glory, appears and triumphs every night on Europeans' most famous stages. Following from Milan, Paris, Vienna, Helena gave an exceptional recital in which her voice was even more powerful and moving than ever. Helena at this point is at the peak of her artistic career and her recitals that year are exceptional. The high point in testimony to this greatness is her unforgettable interpretation of Rigoletto, sung with her great friend, the Russian tenure. Let us not forget that the letter was recently decided, or the latter has recently decided to serve. Oh, America! Wake cow music, hello! This evening, adoring crowds filled out the bull choir to say their fond farewells. Hmm. Interesting. Huh. Not at this address. Return to sender. Wow. Dear Helena. Please forgive my familiarity of tone. I have written to you so often and for so long now I feel I have come to know you intimately through my correspondence. Uh, sure. I hope if my previous letters have reached you that you share this feeling. Stalker! We have a stalker! I'm writing you to address this for the 112th time. I hope that you will one day return there and you'll find one of my letters. This one maybe. I can only hope! It's just that I have so much to say to you, so much to share. Wow. Uh, okay. Huh. Wait, did I get to keep those? I think I did. Letters to Helena. Oh boy. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Hmm. So what are we going to do now? This is weird. Like, what is this? I mean, I know he called it a museum, but... What the heck? Wow, she's an old lady. Oh, wait a minute. I know an old lady. Huh. Let's give dear old mama a call. Maybe we'll call Dan, too, because... Mom! Hi, Mom. Kate! What? Have you seen the time? Why are you phoning me in the middle of the night? Oh, sorry, Mom. I forgot about the time zones. Did I wake you? Um, well, of course you woke me up. I, I was sleeping deeply, too. I simply gotta get my beauty sleep. I've got an absolutely crazy day tomorrow. I'm sorry, it's just that it's real important and urgent. I haven't got a lot of time. Well, if it really can't wait till tomorrow, Munchkin, come on, tell your mommy what's up. Uh, no way I'm calling Dan for you, if that's what you want. Mom, listen, please. I seem to remember you're seeing a Marovich or something like that at the moment. No, 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 no. Malkovich, Munchkin. Frank Malkovich. That's the one. Yeah, right. So, but he's an opera singer, right? That's right. They say he had the finest voice of his time, my dear. Imagine that. That's just great. So then he must have known a famous singer called Helena Romansky. She's Russian, too. Please, if you can ask him if... Listen, honey, if it's stars you're after, Frank knows them all. I'll just wake him up and let him tell you himself. You mean he's... Ha 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 ha! Oh, Kate, listen, you're still there. Frank tells me he did hang out with the Romansky once, but it was platonic. You know those singers. She's a great soprano. Great. Does he know where she went? Does, does she still sing? Where does she live? 
One second, Munchkin. Do you know? Uh, oh, oh. Frank says she was very ill and she withdrew from circulation. Really? Oh, what is... Oh, oh okay. Um, she went to rest in some spa somewhere. He thinks it was called Arlbad, but it was 15 years ago and he's not sure. And, well, honey, when Frank wakes up, he always takes a little bit of time to get going, you know. Thanks a bundle, Mom. And you. Frank, too. You're both fantastic. Love you both. And thanks again. Catch you later. <laughs> I guess, you know, never too old to have a companion in your bed, I suppose. All right, folks, we're going to take a break from Siberia, but we'll be back very soon. Let me know what you think of the game. I'm your Gibbs. I'll see you next time.